this is lecture 11 in network theory so in this lecture we are going to discuss about mesh analysis and nodal analysis right in previous lecture in lecture 10 we discussed the two concept that is substitution theorem and equivalent capacitance or and equivalent inductance whenever there is a series capacitances what is the equivalent whenever there is a series or parallel inductances what is the equivalent how to find L equivalent or C equivalent, right? Remember, substitution theorem is only applicable when the voltage source and there is a parallel resistance, right? But we cannot apply here source transformation because just we can neglect the R and voltage we can apply. But what about the, super, uh, what do you call, source transformation is, suppose there is a voltage source V and there should be some series resistance RS, suppose this is Vs then only we can apply the source transformation because the current is is equal to vs by rs and the parallel resistance rs because these two circuits will give the same uh, the effects right suppose this is vl so we will get vl as how much we get here also so that's why this source transformation can be applicable here but here we cannot apply this source transformation because vl is nothing but v only right so you have to remember this one substitution theorem we can uh, substitution theorem and the source transformation are not equal right so that is different concept this is different concept right now in this uh, we'll see first one mesh analysis now what is a mesh analysis whenever we write a mesh analysis or whenever we do mesh analysis it is nothing but we have to use two laws that is Kirchhoff voltage law and Ohm's law that is when I write a mesh equation. So in that mesh equation, first I will write KVL. Then from each resistance or any capacitance or any inductance, passive element, there we have to write the Ohm's law, right? So that is about mesh analysis. Now, what is the procedure in this is, there is some uh, standard procedure. That is, first one, we have to determine if the circuit is a planar circuit or not. And remember, the mesh analysis is only applicable for planar circuit, right? What is a planar circuit that we will see later? So if it is a planar or not, then count the number of meshes or we can say generally mesh means loop, right? How many number of meshes are there are loops, right? Next, label each of the mesh with mesh current. Suppose if there are three meshes, now we have to label those meshes with the currents that is I1, I2, I3, etc. Next, once we label, just write down the now KVL equation around the each mesh, right? So we have to write the KVL once we label the mesh currents. Next one is, suppose if there is any dependent sources in the mesh, then we have to express those uh, dependent sources with respect to mesh currents. That's why if we are having any extra, then we have to go for additional unknown terms of appropriate mesh currents. The last one is very simple, organize the equation and solve them to find the mesh currents, right? It's not about only mesh currents. First, we'll find the mesh current, then required either suppose the voltage is required or some power is required, then we can find, right? This is about the procedure, but we have to define what is the planar circuit, right? So what is the planar circuit is, suppose if I draw a circuit on a plane surface and suppose this is the some R1, R2, R3, some voltage source V and uh, there is resistances R4, R3, some one more resistance like this R5. This type of circuits is called planar circuit because no branch is not passing on another branch, right? It should be a very planar one. Suppose the same circuit, this is a planar. Suppose if it is a circuit is like this, V, R1, R2, R3, R4, R5. Suppose one branch is going like this, some resistance R6 and it is moving like this and it is connected here, right? This is not a planar circuit. So it's a not planar circuit, not a planar circuit. Why? Because this branch is passing over this branch or under this branch. That's why it is called a non-planar or not a planar circuit, non-planar circuit. 
Now, for non-planar circuit, mesh analysis is not applicable. So we cannot write mesh equations right here. So mesh analysis is not applicable for non-planar circuit. Right? That is the condition. So I hope you got what is a planar circuit, what is a non-planar circuit. Right? Now, <coughs> now we have to suppose one more example I will show here. So this is a non-planar circuit. So see here again this branch is on the passing through another branch so that's why it is called a non-planar circuit so this is one more example and uh, for one more example for a planar circuit something like this right no branch is on passing through another branch so it is a al always a planar circuit right next we'll see one example so how to proceed or how to uh, find the mesh currents etc right this is about the mesh analysis Suppose there is a some current voltage source, there is a 1 ohm resistance, 2 ohm resistance, and 3 ohm resistance, some 4 ohm resistance, right? Something like this is there. Now, how to proceed using uh, mesh analysis? Now, if you see, there is a 1 mesh here and 1 mesh here, right? So, before that, I will uh, define mesh. Mesh is a loop. Generally, it is a loop. It is a loop at which or in which there is no other loop, right? In which there is no other loop. There is no other loop. That means once we identify this is a mesh or a loop, and it's inside this, it should not have a mesh. Suppose this is a one mesh. This is one mesh and here we can have another mesh. Suppose if I take the outer loop like this, so it is not a mesh because inside this we are having a another mesh equations. So that is a mesh or loop generally. Now, the first case, we need to identify the number of meshes here. Suppose this is a one mesh. So I will label a current I1 and this is one more loop. I will label current I2. Right now we are having two unknowns. That means how many equations at least we should know at least two equations. So when we write two mesh equations, so we will get two one two equations. Then we can solve. Now here important point is so we have to give first reference node which is here, right? And the labels are given. When we write a KVL around this mesh, I told you already. Whenever we are entering into the resistance. The plus minus here here also plus minus when you are seeing in this loop only only just remember forget about this one so only see this here so we'll give the plus minus terminals now if I apply KVL around loop 1 now again same notations when I are touching into the negative terminal so it will become minus 2 plus 1 into I1 see this is KVL that is suppose this is V1 this is V2 first we will write 2 minus 2 plus V1 plus V2 right that is KVL and V1 is replaced by current into resistance which is Ohm's law right so I am writing KVL plus Ohm's law directly that is voltage across this resistance is current into that resistance so 1 into I1 similarly here if I write plus now and when come we come to this branch there is a two currents actually so this is i1 and this is i2 now what is the difference i1 minus i2 now you may ask why we are taking i1 minus i2 so there is a one blind rule whenever you are in this branch that means the i1 is the largest right this is a dominant so whenever this is the dominant the current direction should be in this uh, direction only so that's why i1 is positive and i2 is negative because we are assuming that this is the dominant so it will be smaller so that's why i1 minus i2 which is equal to 0 now we have to rearrange that is 2 i1 plus i1 so it will become 3 i1 minus 2 i2 and this minus 2 is going that side so 2 equation 1 next we will write the equation 2 that is kvl around loop 2 or mesh 2 now when we write kvl so always plus minus for resistances plus minus but when you are in this branch or in this loop 
when this is the i2 is a dominant that's why this polarities will be looking like this because we have to forget about this one we have to see only this current now simple 3 into i1 i2 that is ohm's law plus 4 into i2 plus 2 into now if you see here in this branch we are getting again two currents but when you are in this loop this is the dominant so i2 is the dominant so 2 into i2 minus i1 is the current through in the through or following uh, flowing through this branch now if i rearrange see only here i1 is there so minus 2 i1 under 3 8 i2 plus 4 i2 plus 2 so 4 plus 2 6 plus 9 i2 is equal to 0 this is the equation now we can easily solve two equations so that is 2 i1 is equal to 9 i2 right or i1 is equal to 9 by 2 i2 now if i uh, substitute in the this one in this here so 3 into 9 by 2 into i2 minus 2 by 2 is equal to 2 if i take i2 common so 27 by 2 minus 2 is equal to 2 right so if i directly find i2 is equal to 4 by 2 2 are 4 so 27 minus 4 23 so 4 by 3 amperes this is the i2 now from this expression i can find i1 also so i1 is equal to 9 by 2 into 4 by 23 so 2 2 so 18 by 23 amperes is a i1 so loop 1 mesh current is i i1 which is 18 by 23 amperes and i2 is 4 by 23 amperes so this is about mesh analysis right now we need to define one term which is how many equations required to solve mesh analysis or how many so that is the one uh, definition is there suppose there are number of branches suppose there are b branches there are b branches in a circuit and and n nodes n nodes in a circuit then b branches and then b unknowns are there suppose b unknowns are there then the equations required then the equations required to solve or to find the number of unknowns right to so the equations required is b minus n plus 1 so this is the number of minimum number of requ equations required to solve b unknowns or we can say what are the number of branches in the circuit so example if i take suppose this is 1 ohm 2 ohms 3 ohm some plus minus 2 volt plus minus 5 volt something like this now first identify now number of branches so if you see between two nodes there should be branch so this is one branch and if you see this this is total is one branch so you cannot take here and here because we are not ending with here so this total branch is one so one one branch two branch three branch so b is equal to three and here one branch i mean one node and second node so we need to include the reference node also so n is equal to 2 now what are the equations required equations what are the unknowns we can say i1 and i2 so only two unknowns right so that is so b minus 3 i mean b minus n plus 1 so b branches are 3 nodes are 2 plus 1 so 3 minus 2 1 1 plus 1 2 two equations required to to find the two unknowns i1 and i2 right this is the minimum number of equations required right sometimes we are uh, saying that b unknown sometimes we can say some m unknowns right so we should get at least m equations so b minus n plus 1 right so if i take b and b here so it will be confusing so if i take b and m the m unknowns are there so the equations required is b minus n plus 1 right so this is about some mesh analysis now in this mesh analysis there is one uh, extra uh, concept is there that is called the super mesh the super mesh concept right so what is this super mesh concept is suppose if we find any current source 
in this mesh suppose this is two volt this is one ohm this is suppose one ampere is there right and this is one ohm plus minus two volt right and is now if you see here i cannot apply the kvl around this loop or we can say around this loop also reason is across any current source across a current source across a current source voltage is arbitrary voltage is unknown or we can say arbitrary value it can be anything so it is not a fixed value right so that's why we cannot apply a mesh analysis around this loop or around this loop also so at that moment we need to apply the super mesh concept that means so there is a two meshes but we have we will combine these two meshes as a single mesh that is called super mesh right actually there should be two mesh equations but combinedly we will take as super mesh that is one condition then so first thing is super mesh then apply uh, kvl around super mesh so procedure when this is a super mesh concept is applying so apply kvl around super mesh right that means we got one equation now where we get the another equation at the current source at the whatever the current source is there at the current source apply kcl right then we will get one more expression then we can solve easily now we will see how to solve this one right so again i am telling if any current source is existing we cannot apply mesh analysis there because across current source the voltage is arbitrary we cannot find right so this is a simple method to find so we will apply so we will ne neglect this super i mean the current source then we will apply a super mesh then at the current source we will apply kcl right now how see this is i1 this is i2 right now what is the super mesh is so when we start with this so i will get minus 2 plus i1 plus in this loop this is not i1 or a whatever so only here we will see i2 only so plus i2 plus 2 is equal to 0 so what you will get i1 plus i2 is equal to 0 because these two are same now this is the equation one now i told you what is the uh, we have to write kcl around this current source now if you see this is i1 and this current is i2 so what should be this current incoming one current is coming suppose one ampere and i2 is one ampere so what is the remaining so i1 minus i2 if you apply kcl also you will get the same now what is i1 minus i2 is nothing but the current source which is one ampere this is the equation two now from this equation one and two we will get easily the so these two are uh, opposite so we can cancel this will be 2i1 is equal to 2i1 is equal to 1 or we can say i1 is equal to 0 0.5 amperes right once we get i1 is equal to 0 0.5 ampere from this equation 1 i1 plus i2 is equal to 0 what will be i1 minus i2 or we can say minus 0 0.5 amperes so this is the super mesh concept right whenever we are having a a current source around any loop then we cannot apply a mesh analysis there so we have to apply super mesh concept so remove this one apply mesh or uh, kvl then around the kc uh, current source we need to apply the kcl